when you approached me, Vali, I was excited to come and tell a little bit about our own story. Because yes, we are normally cited. Uh, when we are cited by environmentalists, they normally cite ESCOM, number one, they cite SASOL, number two, and for whatever reason, they cite us number three, you know, as being the biggest uh, emitters uh, of greenhouse gases in South Africa. And so we thought, let us come and share about what we as a primarily a coal business, uh, how we have been uh, responding to, to this climate change, which we take very, very seriously. So serious that back in 2019, uh, as a board, uh, we really undertook a very big strategic decision whereby we approved the adoption of the TCFD recommendations as a strategic framework for guiding our climate change response strategy of which we have just now published our first publication of those recommendations and how we're going to respond to that. They have just been published recently. Also in March uh, 2020, uh, we made a position um, on climate change clear uh, when we published our climate change position statement, whereby we made serious commitments towards carbon neutrality of our scope one and two emissions uh, by the uh, by 2050, and uh, we are also thinking about how we're going to be dealing with our scope three emissions, which very primarily talks to my uh, biggest customer being ESCOM. So Andre and I have begun to have a few cof uh, coffees, and we are going to about to now really seriously look at how we're going to be thinking about how we working together we can actually be part of the solution to to these big challenges. But I just want to help the, uh, the, the audience here understand Exaro's journey. Uh, although we are a predominantly a coal uh, producing company, we have, been a, we have been a diversified mining company in the past. Uh, we are born out of Kumba resources and ASCs we have been merging together to create, to create Exaro. But we also have been in mineral sense in uh, TIO2, uh, both in South Africa and uh, also in Australia and also in the US. So we have been playing large. We've just divested out of our mineral sense business, uh, TIO2 business just recently. <laughs> but maybe some may not know that back as early as uh, 2009, we started seriously uh, looking as a Xaro about the whole issues around climate change. One of the positive aspects of having played in the coal industry is that one of our biggest markets uh, when I was still running the coal business uh, was the European market, the German, specifically Germany. And as far back as in 20, 2003, already we're starting to hear the German government hear how they were looking at coal from their own industrial base as a means of how they need to get out of that and actually start transitioning themselves into a much lower carbon uh, economy of the future. And with that in mind, with those lessons that we're seeing happening there, seeing how our, even our coal flows into those areas uh, of Europe started shifting, started changing, uh, we then suddenly realize that there is something here that is about to happen. There's a big uh, revolution that's going to emerge that talks to a future clean world through the renewable energy. And as early as 2009, when Sipon Kosi was still the CEO, uh, fortunately, before we created ASCs, where he was the, the MD, uh, country head, of ABB Alstom. So he understand, understood the power sector. And before then, he was also uh, marketing coal uh, for Anglo and also Ingwe. So he had that experience. So together, we was, were looking and thinking about this, um, this shift that we're seeing. We then started saying, how do we start thinking about what's going to be happening? Because one thing about South Africa, South Africa, if they're not creators, they're very fast followers of what is shaping the future. So we said, let us understand that what is happening in Europe, ultimately we've seen it in the cell industry, cellular telephone industry, uh, comms industry, South Africa will soon follow. 
So as far back as 2009, we started saying, who are the players? Who are the guys who are actually starting to think and working on these things? And we started interacting with some of these uh, individuals, some of the consultants who were looking at the energy sector. And then out of that, we made a decision back in 2010 that we will enter the renewable energy industry as a Xaro when it does happen. To cut a long story short, in 2012, we established a company called Synergy, where we partnered with Tata Power and we bid it in the second window. And with that, we ended up having a 50-50 JV that was that actually was awarded uh, two wind farms in the in the Eastern Cape. And today we are currently producing 230 megawatts of renewable energy. We bought out Tata's 50% in, um, in uh, 2020, uh, last year. And for the first time, you will have the first fossil fuel company <laughs> owning its own renewable energy resources, supplying those resources, uh, power into the South African grid. So we've seen the, the importance of this necessity to make this shift of and seeing not only a threat, but an opportunity for a new transitioning from fossil fuels. Yes, it is very clear that we are still predominantly heavily geared towards fossil fuel business, but we see this transition being so critical that we understand also the necessity that in this transition, given the fact that we, we are operating in, in vast communities where there are a lot of these communities they are dependent on us in terms of providing jobs, in terms of providing opportunities. The question for us was that whilst understanding the importance of this change, this whole notion of this just transition, how do we actually effectively do it on the ground in such a way that we don't leave uh, the communities behind? So for us, this transition is not just only about moving ultimately from coal into renewables, but how do we ensure that those communities that depend on us, some of them we are already uh, 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 rehabilitating some of their areas in KZN. And once upon a time, there were coal mines there, and now there are no more coal mines there. And these communities are in destitute. And therefore, we started thinking about how do we look at the challenges that South Africa is uh, and is, is, is challenged with, and how do we ensure that as we commit to this renewal, to this challenge of reducing our carbon emissions, we become also catalyst of new economic activities. Whilst we are operating and also going back to those communities where we've closed the, those, um, those mines and seeing land, seeing land with a new land mindset. Normally, typically mines, they will mine, and then they will rehabilitate and they move on, you see, and there will be ongoing rehabilitation. And we've seen the devastation of what happens when communities which were very dependent on mining have to deal with these uh, challenges. So ours, when we were looking at all of this, we looked at it on three, three prong strategy. We firstly said, we do have a coal asset and we need to say, how do we make sure that we can get the best out of this asset in the short to medium term by not stellarizing those reserves and those resources, which are going to be critical to continue supplying Medupi, supp supp uh, supplying um, on all the other power stations uh, that we are supplying to ESCOM. Uh, and at the same time, ensuring that we decarbonize as we are continuing mining. So our focus has been around those, those uh, resources, those products that have high value coal, which have got low, lower sulfur contents and other impurities, but while at the same time understanding that there is a runway with which we are, have to deal with, because we don't know when coal will finally come to the end. But whilst we are there, we can actually accelerate. We don't commit any further capital to growing our coal business, but it's about how we make sure that we don't sterilize good resources while we still have to commitments to ESCOM on those long-term coal supply agreements. That's one angle. So that's what we call the early value strategy because we need to fund this transition. We need to have the capital to fund this transition. We need to be able to demonstrate to our funders, to the insurance, of our coal business that we are transitioning because 
ultimately the cost of capital uh, is going to be higher if we don't show this transition because banks are be not willing anymore uh, in some instances to fund new coal projects. Insurance companies are also putting a serious premium in, fund, in uh, insuring uh, uh, fossil fuel assets. So ours was to say, we need to be able to show this transition while we are doing that. Another area we are focusing on is the minerals of the future. In other words, what we are saying is that what are those minerals, as, uh, as the minister was talking much earlier on, those minerals that can support a clean future economies. And therefore, we've got a new strategy that is going to be looking beyond mining, beyond coal, which we are busily working on right now. We've identified some of those minerals, and we've got a whole team that is looking at how now we're going to start transitioning on that. The third part of this leg is our renewable business. We are looking at this renewable business in a manner that we are going to create, like what you've seen, what the shells have been doing, how they are moving from, from, from oil dependent businesses to where now they're shifting towards renewable businesses. We are also in that transition right now. We are going to be starting with our own operations. Khurekhaluk is a long life asset, which is going to be supplying um, Dupi and, uh, and, and, and Matimba power station for the, for, for the next, for the next uh, 20, 30 odd years. And we're saying, how do we start decarbonizing Khurekhaluk as an operation? And therefore, one of the first thing we are doing right now is that we're at the late stage of our project where our energy side of our business on an arm's length is negotiating with the mine on coming up with a, a renewable energy solution where we're going to be establishing an 84 megawatt PV plant uh, in, in, in La Palale that could have other spin-offs in that particular area. Now, 84 megawatts uh, for a one facility, that's a big facility. It's going to be one of the biggest probably PV plants in South Africa. And we are looking at doing that for all our other operations. We're already also engaging with other mining companies who are not necessarily wanting to put uh, any uh, renewable energy resources in their balance sheet, but rather looking at uh, uh, terms of long-term PPA agreements. We are also talking to them to say, how can we provide you a service in terms of building your, uh, your, your capabilities in so far as being able to decarbonize, start decarbonizing your own minds. And what is very intriguing is that in this study that we did, uh, we are doing on, uh, on Khura Khalak, we will be able not only to get a plus 12 to 15% cost savings on electricity costs, but we will also be reducing the footprint of the uh, carbon footprint at the mine by 30%, 30 to 35%. And overall for Exaro, it's a 15% reduction in our carbon footprint. Now, you may say, but, you know, ESCOM next door is supplying you power. And we're saying, no, 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 we're gonna actually be helping ESCOM actually increase their capacity on their grid of, of, of their generation capacity so that we will then be complementing them. And so these are some of the conversations we are also looking at to, and talking with Andre to say those cost plus mines where ESCOM themselves are the funders of the CAPEX are the funders of the OPEX. How do we work with them in those operations of which one of them is ours to say that we can actually help support ESCOM in terms of reducing their own cost of electricity, which they have to buy uh, what they have to pay for as part of the mines that they are that, that are supplying dedicated uh, coal to them. How do we reduce that footprint? How do we support one another? So this is about collaboration with them. So that is going to be a new growth area of ours beyond in South Africa, into Africa, right beyond into, into the rest of the world. We see as this whole new growth area that renew, distributed uh, energy that we are looking at as a business and we are busy uh, rolling that out right now. The third part, as I indicated uh, earlier on, is that um, we had, I had a very fortunate experience in 2019 to have been invited by uh, the Vatican uh, under the auspices of the faith-based organizations, uh, which um, also included the Anglicans there, whereby the church was looking at mining from a common good. That was the theme. So global CEOs 
were actually invited there to say, how does mining start responding in a manner that shows good to broader society? And with that in mind, we then started saying, there is a real big opportunity for us as a Zaro beyond just our social labor plans, beyond just our normal community development plans to start saying, how do we come up with a sustainable growth with an impact on not just in terms of profits, but impact in terms of transforming society, impact in terms of transforming our communities. And we have now begun to look at all projects of which we can utilize our land in terms of creating a whole new agri economy value chain on our land, working with other experts in those areas and looking at also biodiversity projects that we can do in various areas. We are next to the Kruger National Park in one of the areas that we are closing. And we are starting to package all of these projects. We're also working in the Eastern Cape in terms of how we can package all of this project for big scale, for big impact. And we are also working with the likes of Anglo with others in Lepalale, in, in what we call the impact catalyst. All of this is about looking at packaging these uh, projects to, and go after the impact investors who are looking for these types of uh, projects in terms of how they themselves can create those type of investments. And now that we are doing that, we are now taking this thing and with those uh, groupings, interestingly enough, some of these uh, some of these churches they actually have big power. <laughs> you know, the the Vatican is a country in itself, and so we are beginning to work with their relationships, their partnerships in terms of how we're going to package this with the and they're in, in they are also in um, introducing us to other impact investors where they are looking at these type of investments all over the world to say how can we start bringing that and doing it here in South Africa in a big way. So our journey around climate uh, climate uh, change abatement is one that not only just looks at the environment or what it is, but also looking at making sure that in that journey that we are able to create new economies because ultimately our minds are gonna to come to the end of life. And therefore, what have you done? How do you have you created new impactful investments that are gonna be sustainable, that are gonna create new economies that talk to exactly what the Minister Patel was talking about, look, looking at various areas around Pumalanga. How do we start creating new economies that is also gonna be supportive of the renewable energy strategy that we are embarking on? So, Ours, we are trying to look at this thing much more holistically because we understand that for us to be sustainable in the future as an organization, we need to transition to create those and be a, play a catholic role in ensuring that we can create a sustainable society, sustainable in you know, a country in such a way that we have played our small meaningful role to that. So that's how as Exaro we are looking at this. It's about dealing with climate change, it's about creating impact investments, about creating new opportunities for our communities while contributing into cleaner uh, through renewables. So that is just our short story about how we are looking at this. And we are looking at partnering with a lot because we can't do this on our own. And therefore we are very excited that we could have been called in this uh, to this session today, because it's a very important session. And uh, we're looking forward to playing our own role as, as small as we may be in terms of this big challenge and, big, and this big problem that we are trying to solve for this country and for the world. Thank you.